Now, when the Genesis GV80 Coupe concept was unveiled just this year, I was so excited because it looked to me like that is a car. This is a car that is almost going to go straight into production. Yes, you need to fiddle around with the headlights and taillights and stuff like that, but it looked pretty much production ready. And now we have the 2025 Genesis GV80 Coupe, which joins the slope-backed SUV parade. So what I want to do in this video is, when I look at this production version, something here got lost in production. It doesn't have the same presence as the GV80 Coupe concept. So I want to, you know, analyze this design, and I'm gonna. This is gonna be like a uh, study in just how important wheels and tires are to properly plant a car like we had in the concept. There were also some changes in the rear end that I wish we would have seen in the production from the concept, but they changed that up. And then of course, we need to talk about this design, the front, side and rear. There's also a facelift to the normal GV80 GV that I'm gonna show you. And, but we're gonna compare the concept to the production model. And then of course, we need to talk about this interior as well and what is going on there. So first of all, let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver. So. The Coupe borrows the top engine offering from the G90, which is a 409 horsepower E supercharged 3.5 liter V6 to give it a performance edge over the standard uh, SUV, the GB80. And that sounds great, 409 horsepower, it sounds fantastic, and a V6, all good there. And this will be a 2025 model year, and it will arrive here in the US uh, next year. So it will launch in uh, South Korea uh, this year and come over here a little later. So it's previewed by the GV80 Coupe concept, again, which I loved when it first came out. I thought it was one of the best looking Coupe SUVs. I'm not a fan of Coupe SUVs, but that one just looked like it was designed from the start to be a Coupe, Coupe SUV. And I think that's what sets those apart. They look a little better than other Coupe SUVs. So as I said, you have 409 horsepower with a range topping engine come, it comes at launch, a sport plus driving mode and a selectable instrument cluster view. The Coupe gets exclusive 20 and 22 inch wheels. Obviously you need to go with the 22s here. But the thing is, I'm gonna show you exactly what I would do to, to the Coupe SUV. Uh, if, if I were to buy this, I would, I would probably go with the 20s and then, uh, you know, switch them out myself for proper looking wheels. So th this is the interior. This is the new interior of the GV80. Uh, and I have a lot to say about this. I think you know already what I'm going to say about this interior because it, it just doesn't make sense to me what companies are doing. Pretty much across the board, all car, car companies these days, what they do with the interior. So the infotainment screen merges with a digital instrument cluster to create a single 27 inch display. Genesis also switches to touch based climate controls. Why would you do that? And then you have the rear seat passengers also get new 14.6 inch screens of their own, one on each uh, uh, the back the back side of, of the front seats. So you have 13 exterior paint colors for the standard GV80 and 15 for the GV80 Coupe. So you have two specific colors for the GV80 Coupe, which is nice. Expect the Coupe to cost a few thousand dollars more than the SUV and just have a look at the concept down here. So with that said, uh, let's jump into Photoshop here and let's talk about what is going on here? Something is lost with the production model. So as you can see, up top we do have the beautiful, properly stanced concept from this year. And I think it looks so good. It looks super planted with these wheels and tire setup. And have a look at this. The bodywork ends right here with this fender. And then you have the wheel sitting right in line, sitting flush with the bodywork. And yes, some of you are still going to say that it's going to rub when you uh, bump, uh, hit a bump or something like that, but that's not the case. You can't have a setup like this without any sort of rubbing, even if you bottom out the suspension. And that is, that's exactly what I want in specifically if we have a coupe like this. I love this design and unfortunately, you, you might be able to help me out here. Something is just lost in the production model. It doesn't have the same presence. It definitely does not have the same stance. So you can see the, the, the wheel gap here from the top of the tire is a lot higher on the production model. The wheels just feels like they don't fill out the wheelhouses as they should. 
and as they did in the concept up top. However, we still have a pretty much identical front end. And I said when I talked about this design that we need to have some sort of changes to these LEDs at the front end because I can't see any headlights in the concept. It's just a LED strip and that's not going to provide sufficient lighting for a proper headlight setup. So this is definitely something that I was expecting to change, which is all fine. And the rest of the front end looks pretty nice. We have this same uh, design in the graphics, in the sides, in the lower section, that they kept pretty much the same style in the production version. We even have these four slots down here, which is specific for the, uh, the, the uh, coupe coming from the concept down here, then being implemented down here in the bottom in the production. So the front end looks really cool to me. I've always been a fan of the GV80 and pretty much every single Genesis car these days, they just look really good. And the thing is they haven't been around for long at all and they still have a very solid brand identity even after just a few years on the market as a completely new brand. So well done Genesis for creating that strong identity and, and also implementing the pretty much as much as you can I guess from the concept into this production version. However, have a look at the wheels here and this is where wheels entire setup comes in. So if we just pop in the, the wheels from, let's make them a little darker, uh, from the actual concept car up top, you can see just how it changes. I think that looks a little better. I, it just changes the stance and the proportions and plantedness of this car. So you need to have the proper wheels. And I will always be in favor of having a little less practicality in a car if it makes a massive difference in the design. So this practicality here, it is going to be a much lower ride height, as you can see, if we were to have these wheels than the normal production wheels. And it also, you know, might cause a bit of a bumpy ride, but I don't care about that. If it looks, if this is the difference that you get between the standard wheels and then you have the concept car wheels, I'm definitely gonna go with bigger wheels and this stance that I was in love with, with the concept and maybe potentially get a little bumpier ride. So the side view here, same thing here. We have the uh, concept obviously up top and I love this line, the shoulder lines that we have in Genesis these days. We have this sloping line just fading into the door in this area and then it comes back even stronger over the rear axle and you have this beautiful ducktail in the rear and you also we're going to have a look at the rear in a minute but you have this elliptical housing for the taillight graphics looking absolutely fantastic and i do love this color i'm not sure if this color is actually going to go into production one of the two special colors for the coupe but you know genesis is sort of a luxury brand with a pretty big hint of sportiness to it so i think a aggressive color like this or a standout shouty color like this actually suits specifically the coupe and then you have this added shoulder line that dips down beautifully in creating this forward motion in this design and these wheels are again the proper wheels that you need to have if you want to plant your car properly and maybe lose a little bit of comfort but we also have these two lines, which is typical for Genesis these days, coming back in the taillight sections. We have a connection of the graphics going from the front end all the way to the back, connecting these two lines. And we still have that pretty much intact in the production version. As you can see, we still all the body lines, the key body lines are still here. This sloping roof line, this sharp, uh, strong shoulder lines over the front and rear axle. We also have this ducktail in the rear. However, there are some major, major changes to the taillight design and the housing for it. And that's what we're going to talk about in the rear view. Something that I think is a, a, a huge missed opportunity for Genesis to do something special with the coupe and separate it even more from the normal SUV. But I do like this roof line and for being a coupe SUV, I still think it looks pretty, it's one of the best, better looking coupe SUVs out there on the market, even though it wasn't designed initially to be, to be a coupe SUV, because we do have the GV80, then they chopped off the roof and they created this. But for some reason, Genesis has managed to make this into a beautiful looking coupe SUV, which is very rare in my opinion. However, again, popping in the correct wheels, have a look at this. 
Before standard wheels, I do believe that these are probably the 22 inch wheels, but even if you have those wheels, they just don't look right on this car. They need to be bigger and they need to be more beefy. And that's exactly what we get if we take this wheel from the concept car, apply it on to the uh, GV80. And all of a sudden you do have that, you know, that vibe of the concept comes back in the production uh, version when you have the right wheels and tires on it. It's really as simple as that. The rest of the body looks pretty much identical except for the rear end. So this is my biggest disappointment with uh, with the production version is how they, they they lost some very key important features in the rear. So have a look at the the dog tail that you have back here. Uh, sticking out you, ha you ha even have an additional Looks like maybe this is a carbon fiber piece, but adding ex an extension to the wing, you have a beautiful chamfer right here or edge that fades in this area. And have a look at this, how this line then continues down here. And what this creates is the cut line, the cutoff for the taillights. And that is also one of these details that I loved about the concept. We have this concave feature and here's this ellipse that I talked about earlier, you know, housing all the graphics going all the way around here, creating this ellipse. And you have the light bars stretching and being cut off abruptly right here by this sing single line that goes in from the ducktail into the rear uh, axle. So. What they did here on the production version is they, they completely just took this pretty much the same taillights as we have on the normal GV80. And you can see that there is a clash here now. We don't have the same beautiful uh, chamfer that I talked about in the ducktail. The ducktail doesn't look as pronounced either in the production version. So if we continue this line and cutting it down, you can see that this taillight just clashes now with this line and this was so beautifully done up here in the concept that I'm not sure what maybe it's cost or something like that to not create entirely new taillights for the coupe version I'm not sure if they use exactly the same taillight as the normal GV80 but uh, maybe maybe that's a reason but I would like to have it still just be something like this you know have the same line cutting in as, as, as we talked about from the ducktail and then creating that border for the taillights. I think that would have been such a better solution for this design. But unfortunately, that's not what we got uh, in this case. And another detail that I really wish they would have implemented here, which is something that I rarely support, is I do wish that we had the full light bars like this to really nail in that Genesis identity with the two lines that goes all the way from the front end, the headlights right here, and then cutting in to the rear end. Both of these lines, as you can see, wrapping or like a wrap, wrapper around the entire car. So I would love, love to see actually this being a, a complete, uh, you know, light bars in the back. Now I quickly want to show you the facelifted, the normal GV80 before we have a look at the interior. So this up top is the current 2023 and this is the 2024 model. And when I did a in-person live review of, of this GV80 on the Sketch Monkey channel, the one thing that I said that I wanted to change in the front end is have a look at this corner here and how this is cut very sharply and this area just doesn't feel well integrated with the rest of the flow in the front end. See this piece right here, and this line specifically. Everything here is horizontal. The, uh, the headlights are horizontal, the grill is horizontal, but down here, this has a slight angle to it, this little wing. I'm not sure it comes up on the camera, I hope it does. So what I wanna do is just bring that angle down to be horizontal as well and in line with the rest of the graphic. I don't like this corner. I think this is not well implemented in the overall design. And in addition to that, we have all of these horizontal lines all over the car. And then you have this slight angle, upward angle on this fin. So you can see that it goes from wide here to narrow, uh, narrower as we come to the corner of the lower section of the front end. So this is definitely the only piece that I said that I wanted to change when I did the review on this car. If you wanna go and check out the full review, you can do that on the Sketch Monkey channel. Just search the Sketch Monkey GV80 and I'll go into more detail and show you exactly on the actual car what I'm talking about. So that's exactly what they changed in the facelift. Just have a look at how much better this lower section is you can see how, how how much more natural this integration of the lower section feels 
compared to the 2023 model. This looks so much better. I do want to have everything be blacked out still, the grill blacked out and this chrome piece going around the lower section here, I want to have that be blacked out as well. But the overall graphics and the layout for this just look so much better and that's the only change that I wanted to see on the GV80. So thank you Genesis for doing that exact change. Now, this is the interior of the new GV80. So, uh, you know, you know what I'm going to say here. It's just the same story over and over and over again. I'm not sure who prefers to have a 28 inch screen like we have in the new one down here to a beautiful interior like we have up top here. This is the, the old one, the 2023 compared to the 2024 is so much better. Actually, this looks like the new version to me and this is the version that I still would like to have. We have a fully digital gauge cluster in the 2023 model year with a solid beefy nice housing to it and then we have the infotainment screen sitting up top here not very well integrated I would say. We have physical buttons for the climate control settings to me, this is just a, a beautiful, perfect interior for 2023. But we can't just stop there. We need to keep innovating and keep adding pixels to every single interior. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened in the 2024 model facelift down here. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why, in, uh, why uh, in interior designers or companies have this rule that they need to have this type of screen on every single car these days. It's just unfortunate that we're heading in this direction. It looks like we do have a solid, a, a separated screen at least for the climate control settings. But as you can see, it is a screen, touch screen. So everything is touch except for maybe uh, the, the dials for the temperature right here. But everything else is moving into more and more digital stuff. And as you know, I'm not a huge fan of that. So what I would like to do here is to take the steering wheel from the new. I definitely prefer the, the new steering wheel. I think this looks so much better and sportier with a three spoke design. I was never really a fan of this oval that we have in the middle of the 2023 model year. So take this steering wheel, apply it onto the 2023 model and I would have my perfect Genesis GV80 coupe and last but not least just slash the taillights as we talk about to be in line with the ducktail. Those are the changes that I would personally want to see on the production version of the GV80 coupe.